So Apple's new iPhone 15 Pro is now out in the wild and it contains the new A17 Pro chip, uh, which could give us some clues as to what we might find in the forthcoming M3 chip. Let's talk about it. Now, please excuse the slightly odd set today. I'm currently on vacation in California doing a bit of a road trip and I've probably picked the least photogenic part of California to do my video today, but never mind. Uh, let's talk about M3. Now, historically with M1 and M2, when the A chip came out for the phone, it gave us some clues as to what the performance was going to be like. And that's because the A chips share the same cores as the M chips. Now, just to be clear, the M chip is not based upon the A chip. Rather, both M chip and A chip use the same core designs. And when it comes to the CPU, there are two different cores. You've got the performance core and the efficiency core. In the A17 Pro, we've got two performance cores and four efficiency cores. Since both chips share the same core designs, it's been possible in the past to take a look at the benchmark figures for the A chip and then get a pretty good idea of what uh, the M chip is going to bring. I'm not so convinced that's going to be the case, though, with M3. And that's because Apple is now using TSMC's N3 process. And this incorporates something that TSMC call FinFlex. Now, what FinFlex does is it basically gives the chip designer three choices. Uh, they can lean more towards efficiency or they can lean more towards performance and there are three grades and we'll put those up on the screen. Uh, so if you want more performance you increase voltage and die size and if you want more efficiency then you go in the opposite direction. But what's great about each of these three choices is that every single one of them is both more efficient and more performant than the previous N5 process. Uh, this is great news because possibly it will change the way the M3 lineup looks. Your standard M3 chip, perhaps Apple would choose to go with a more efficient design. So your MacBook Air, for instance, will have the longest possible battery life. Uh, the same chip will no doubt end up in the new iPad Pro when that comes out. And again, you'll want efficiency as the priority here. Now, this gets especially interesting when we get to M3 Pro and M3 Max. Now, with the M1 and M2 Pro and Max chips, there's absolutely no difference between the CPUs on these chips. The difference that you got by going up to the Max is a greater memory bandwidth and a better GPU. Um, what we mean by that is more GPU cores. But what Apple could do with M3 Pro and Max is create more of a difference between the chips using these FinFlex options. So M3 Pro might get a middle of the road balance between efficiency and performance, whereas M3 Max might get the full performance benefits. And there's also been rumors that the M3 Pro and Max chips will be different anyway because there'll be more cores in the M3 Max. And that will give users more of a reason to upgrade from the Pro chip to the Max chip. And that's going to be good for Apple sales. Uh, something else that's interesting about the FinFlex options is that they don't apply to the entire system on chip. You can actually choose different options for different blocks of the chip. So this enables Apple to choose one particular option for the CPU and then a different option for the GPU. And that could be critical because with the A17 Pro, Apple announced that they'd redesign the GPU with their own shader architecture. And I'm guessing this means that they're moving away from the PowerVR technology that they licensed from Imagination Technologies previously. Now, PowerVR, of course, is a very mature technology and Apple has been building on those original designs uh, with each iteration of their new chips. Apple can use those FinFlex options, of course, to give that GPU segment of the system on chip a bit more performance and help to mask this transition. It's an ideal time to do it. So for M3, the standard chip, expect to see more single core performance, expect to see more multi-core performance and an improved GPU overall. Now, where it's gonna get interesting is next year when we start to see the M3 Pro, Max and Ultra chips come out. And it'd be really interesting to see whether Apple does indeed make use of these various features that are available to them with TSMC's new process node. And I think that's gonna be much better for consumers to see more of a difference between the M3 Pro chip and the M3 Max chip. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, thanks as always for spending a bit of time with me and for supporting the channel as you always do. I'll see you again soon for some more Geekly.